guys, I'm Layla. Welcome to Red Lore Stories. Today's lore story is going to be for Gallus Bloodcrest, the newest mythic champ that's added to the game. Guys, let's check out his Super Saiyan form. Okay, that's really cool. I think they did a really neat job with him. He gives me such like Godzilla vibes, guys. What do you guys think? I absolutely love it. Let's check out his lore story and see how he ends up getting this rooster in the game. Gallus was canny and strong, learned equally in courtly etiquette and street smarts. To survive as a senior commander of Arnox City Watch and with a few lizard men trusted by the largely human overseers of Arnok's defense, demanded nothing less. He walked a narrow path of sterling fealty to his masters while rejecting his heritage and the savage nature that most in Arnok believed was inherent to his kind. This prejudice locked most lizardmen out of respectable membership in society, creating an underclass of lizardmen vagabonds and criminals, which reinforced the bodies and created a self-perpetuating cycle. Gallus, having no desire to be persecuted like the rest of his people, threw in his lot with the oppressors. Gallus was recruited after he ventured alone into Arnok's sewers in an attempt to rescue some kidnapped children that included one of his cousins, as well as collect the reward for killing their captors. Armed only with a sickle and hatchet better suited for farm work, he cut his way through gigantic rats, living slime, and fed a drowned undead just to reach the kidnappers, many of whom he killed. To his shame and dismay, he could not rescue the hostages, who the gang relocated when Gallus began his rampage. When he brought a dozen bandit heads before a magistrate to claim their bounty, the city guard took note of his grit, persistence, and capacity for bloodshed. They made an offer he could not refuse. To Veda's loyalty, Gallus was frequently pitted against his own kind as an undercover infiltrator of Lizardman gangs, and he cracked numerous smuggling operations of violent cartel and ideologically motivated insurrectionist cells. Gallus knew he was exploiting his fellow Lizardmen, that a virulent hatred of him as a traitor to his kind and class was at least somewhat justified. Nonetheless, he feigned an indifferent swagger when around them, which aggravated them further, and believed his overlords marked his commitment. Then came the Red Crusade. Intolerance and Arnak reached a fever pit as orcs, ogre, and skinwalkers, lizardmen alike, were labeled deviants and monstrosities. The more hatred swirled around him, the harder Gallus zealously purged the targets of the crusade, all the while maintaining a nonchalant manner around the increasing fanaticism of his human lords. He was a model crusader, and yet being of tainted substance, he was never truly accepted, and in turn, his crackdowns made him all the more despised by the crusade's victims. Inevitably, despite all his peasement, the city turned upon him. Gallus was hauled before a show trial and accused of corruption, the verdict a foregone conclusion. In light of his services, he was spared imprisonment but was stripped of his title and cast into the streets. Hated and hunted by those he had agreed while serving the state, Gallus could not find shelter in the squalid districts where lizardmen were confined and had to steal and scrounge to survive. He sold chicken from the marketplace, but when he slaughtered consumed the fowl, misfortune struck once again. He soon became a skinwalker. The transformation was quick but agonizing, and the pain of realization of what he had become hurt Gallus even more. He had fallen so far, betraying his people to stay in the graces of those who hated him, not for what he did, but what he was. Self-pity clawed at his heart. With no one to turn to, Gallus was captured shortly after his transformation. The crusade had become a murderous purge by then. It would have been burned at the stake were it not for the intervention of a powerful Arnok patron, a high elf mage named Sarabon, an eccentric scholar and collector. He was intrigued by Gallus, a rare combination of lizardman and cockerel, for reminding him of the legendary beast known as the cockatrice, half lizard and half fowl. Perhaps, thought the elf, there was a grain of truth to the legend. A few choice bribes secured him ownership of Gallus, and he took the skinwalkers to his estate in the nearby countryside. There, Cyrobon subjected Gallus to horrific experimentation, breezily discoursing on magic and anatomy with his apprentices while gleefully sawing through Gallus' flesh and bone, vivisecting the skinwalker to observe his bodily functions. Cyrobon sought to understand by replication the body-warping power of the skinwalker curse. To this end, he enchanted Gallus' flesh to be more pliable and mutable, and deliberately destabilized the curse energy bound to his body and soul. Gallus' guttural clucks of anguish that accompanied each new spell were taken as signs of efficacy. Finally, Cyrobon caused Gallus to transform yet again, from humanoid rooster into a huge scaled and feathered exaggeration of his previous state. Delighted, Cyrobon complained that he had discovered the next stage of the skinwalker disease.
Cyberbond, like Gallus once had, thought himself safe from the powers that be. But, as it did with Gallus, the rising tide of violent intolerance consumed him. The Crusaders came to believe that Saraba was a sympathizer of blasphemy, seeking to create empowered skinwalker monstrosities to fight against the forces of light, and stormed his laboratory. Gallus escaped during the chaos, slaughtering Crusaders and Cyberbond's apprentices, flesh crafters alike, in the process. The maddeningly unnatural magic emanated from him, his stench of chemicals and gore, and his dreadful appearance combined to drive his adversaries into a tempestic frenzy. They were easy prey as they charged recklessly at him, desperate to destroy a being that should not have been. As he loped away from the carnage, Gallus was confronted by a flash of white light. The Arbiter herself stood before him, sternly holding a shimmering shard. She pronounced her judgment sympathizing with Gallus' suffering, but declaring he could not go free to menace the wider world. Before the shapeshifting hybrid could attack her, the Arbiter subdued Gallus in the shard and trapped him within. He would serve her cause, or else remain imprisoned forever. He was too strong to ignore, yet too pathetic to destroy. Wow, guys! What do you think of this story for Gallus? He's the newest mythic in the game. So, I have to say, I, what I find interesting is they did not start with him as a human, like he wasn't sacred or he wasn't banded or he wasn't a human or a barbarian or anything. He actually started as a lizard. Now, what I do like about that, like I said, is how I think this form reminds me of Godzilla a lot. So I like how they did that. And they kind of talk about how this, this form was meant to look kind of like lizard and bird at the same time. So I think that they kind of nailed that. Yeah, the story is a bit sad, particularly in the end, how they're saying that he's He's kind of a threat, which was why the Arbiter actually closed him. A lot of times what happens with the Arbiter, if you guys follow my stories, is a lot of times she actually gives them kind of like ultimatums, right? Is that, you know, they could choose to repent and, you know, help Lemay's cause and fight for her, or she ends up kind of killing them or destroying them, right? In this case, she actually didn't give an alternative. Like she showed up and she trapped him in a shard. So I thought that that was very, very interesting. Guys, Leave me a comment down below. What do you think for the lore story for Gallus Bloodcrest? I do think the story is kind of sad as well, too. Like I, said, I do find it interesting that they actually started with him as a lizard. And then, yeah, so then now he's in the Skinwalkers because he's been cursed, basically, right? I'd love to know what you guys think of the story. Drop me a comment down below. And thanks for watching.